Plume. Thanks for tuning in with me here for this video today. If you are returning to my station, welcome back. And if you are brand new, thanks for stopping by. I do offer education and information on holistic wellness and also meditation. And today we are continuing our study of A Course in Miracles. I will be reading two lessons on this video and you will be able to look at the timestamps below and access these videos on the days that you need to. There is a lesson for each day in this course. Let's get into it. Lesson 162, I am as God created me. This single thought held firmly in the mind would save the world. From time to time, we will repeat it as we reach another stage in learning. It will mean far more to you as you advance. These words are sacred for they are the words God gave in the answer to the world you made. By them, it disappears and all things seen within its misty clouds and vapors, illusion, vaporous illusions vanish as these words are spoken for they come from God. Here is the word by which the son became his father's happiness, his love and his completion. Here creation is proclaimed and honored as it is. There is no dream these words will not dispel, no thought of sin and no illusion which the dream contains that will not fade away before their might. They are the trumpet of awakening that sounds around the world, the dead awake in answer to its call. And those who live and hear this sound will never look on death. Holy indeed is he who makes these words his own, arising with them in his mind, with him as he goes to sleep. His dreams are happy and his rest secure, his safety certain and his body healed because he sleeps and wakens with the truth before him always. He will save the world because he gives the world what he receives each time he practices the words of truth. Today we practice simply, for the words we use are mighty, and they need no thoughts beyond themselves to change the mind of whom, of him who uses them. So holy is it changed that it is now the treasury in which God places all his gifts and all his love to be distributed to all the world. Incre increased in giving, kept complete, because its sharing is unlimited. And thus you learn to think with God. Christ's vision has restored your sight by salvaging your mind. We honor you today. Yours is the right to perfect holiness you now accept. With this acceptance is salvation brought to everyone. For who could cherish sin when holiness like this has blessed the world? Who could despair when perfect joy is yours? Available to all as remedy for grief and misery all sense of loss and for complete escape from sin and guilt. And who would not be brother to you now, you, his redeemer and his savior? Who could fail to welcome you into his heart with loving invitation, eager to unite with one like him in holiness? You are as God created you. These words dispel the night and darkness is no more. The light has come today to bless the world, for you have recognized the Son of God, and in that recognition is the world. Amen. That concludes lesson 162, and now we will begin 163, The Course in Miracles. There is no death. The Son of God is free. Death is a thought that takes on many forms, often unrecognized. It may appear as sadness, fear, anxiety, or doubt, as anger, faithlessness, and lack of trust, concern for bodies, envy, and all forms in which the wish to be as you are not may come to tempt you. All such thoughts are but reflections of the worshiping of death as savior and as giver of release. Embodiment of fear, the host of sin, God of the guilty, and the Lord of all illusions and deceptions, does the thought of death seem mighty? 
for it seems to hold all living things within its withered hand, all hopes and wishes in its blighting grasp, all goals perceived but in its sightless eyes. The frail, the helpless, and the sick bow down before its images, thinking it alone is real, inevitable, worthy of their trust, for it alone will surely come. All things but death are seen to be unsure, too quickly lost, however hard to gain, uncertain in their outcome, apt to fail the hopes they once engendered, and to leave the taste of dust and ashes in their wake, in place of aspirations and of dreams. But death is counted on, for it will come with certain footsteps when the time has come for its arrival. It will never fail to take all life as hostage to itself. Would you bow down to idols such as this? Here is the strength and might of God himself perceived with an idol made of dust. Here is the opposite of God proclaimed as Lord of all creation, stronger than God's will for life, the endlessness of love and heaven's perfect, changeless constancy. Here is the will of father and of son defeated finally and laid to rest beneath the headstone death has placed upon the body of the Holy Son of God. Unholy in defeat, he has become what death would have him be. His epitaph, which death itself has written, gives no name to him, for he has passed to dust. It says but this, here lies a witness, God is dead. And thus it writes again and still again, while all the while it worships its worshipers agree, and kneeling down with foreheads to the ground, they whisper fearfully that it is so. It is impossible to worship death in any form and still select a few you would not cherish and would yet avoid, while still believing in the rest. For death is total. Either all things die or else they live and cannot die. No compromise is possible, for here again we see an obvious position, which we must accept if we be sane. What contradicts one thought entirely cannot be true, unless its opposite is proven false. The idea of the death of God is so preposterous that even the insane have difficulty in believing it, for it implies that God has once alive, was once alive, and somehow perished, killed apparently by those who did not want him to survive. Their stronger will could triumph over his, and so eternal life gave way to death, and with the father died the son as well. Death's worshipers may be afraid, and yet can thoughts like these be fearful? If they say, saw that it is only this which they believe, they would be instantly released. And you will show them this today. There is no death. And we renounce it now in every form for their salvation and our own as well. God made not death. Whatever form it takes must therefore be illusion. This is the stand we take today. And it is given us to look past death and see the life beyond. Our Father, bless our eyes today. We are your messengers and we would look upon the glorious reflection of your love, which shines in everything. We live and move in you alone. We are not separate from your eternal life. There is no death, for death is not your will. And we abide where you have placed us in the life we share with you and with all living things to be like you and part of you forever. We accept your thoughts as ours and our will is one with yours eternally. Amen. Thanks for tuning in to these lessons and meditations from A Course in Miracles. If you're looking for me in person at my center, you can find my website below, seraphimphilistics.com. I love you and I look forward to seeing you in the next meditation. Bye-bye for now.